Hello, everybody. My name is Mbali Nwoko, and welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. Today, we're going to be speaking to a young entrepreneur who's decided to pursue a career within the vegetable gardening and food nutrition space. And we are speaking to none other than Buko Dem, who is the founder of be Somebody SA. She started a project or a company uh, throughout the global pandemic and um, she's here to tell us about how the business has grown since then and what exactly your organization does within this industry. So if you have any comments or maybe questions for our guests regarding, uh, regarding food, gardening and nutrition, please feel free to comment. Uh, we love to hear your thoughts, your interaction and just have engagement along our shows because we actually you are doing this podcast for you where we could give you insights and knowledge to um, what happens in the agri-industry um, all your questions regarding food and agriculture and yeah obviously just introduce you to uh, industry experts entrepreneurs in the space who are doing phenomenal things on the ground so let's get in touch with our guest this evening Buko uh, Dem thank you so much for coming on to the show how are you doing I am doing very well, thank you. Very super well, actually. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, thank you. So you've got quite an interesting name in this industry um, with regards to your business. Be Somebody South Africa. Tell us about it. <laughs> well, Be Somebody is a, we are an online fresh produce store. And it started really as a concept of wanting everybody to be somebody. I'm B. And my name is Linda Tawaza. Um, and during COVID, when it all started, we had no money. All my other businesses closed down. And being able to go buy food and other necessities was like, okay, do I, do I want to rather buy electricity or do I want to rather buy some vegetables? Um, and then I started researching, going on YouTube as to how I can actually grow my own vegetables. Um, and it worked out. And then I started sharing it with my neighbors. And my neighbors absolutely loved my vegetables. And then I thought, hang on, if I can actually give my vegetables and people love my vegetables, then I can actually definitely mm. be able to sell my vegetables as well. And that's how Be Somebody SA actually started. And I'm proud to oh, say wow. that on the 10th of March, we're going to be celebrating our one year anniversary. Oh, that's fantastic. One year is a great milestone, especially for something that um, just started off, you know, just trying to meet a specific need. You mentioned that you had other businesses before, you know. How has your journey just being an entrepreneur uh, been, especially learning through a lot of trials and errors before COVID-19 came about? And then we'll talk about how now you're finding the space of entrepreneurship in the food and agriculture industry. So just what type of businesses were you involved in before? For, and how did that impact, how did the COVID-19 impact those businesses for you to just move or change directions and go into the agriculture space? Yeah, it was a tourism business actually that I had because I used to work for a tourism company. I was an experience manager where I was creating um, different tours for tourists to go on. Um, COVID happened, obviously that all died down. Um, mm. Yeah, and then what, what we used to do actually um, is that we used to take the tourists to go on the on, on the farms because we work with different farmers from the townships to help them out with resources as well as people to go work there for them. Mm. Um, so now they were always asking me, well, oh, where's your tourists? Where's your tourists? I'm like, ma, it's tourists. They're not here. <laughs> it's COVID. Um, yeah. And then I started through um, the vegetable company. And now what's great is that I've been able to combine the tourism as well as the food agri um, and agriculture space by actually creating mm. tours that do go to the farms and help the farmers out and help them out with resources and to grow vegetables. Mm. So it mm. worked out eventually. Yes. So how does Be Somebody help organization to grow, um, to grow food and build communities? Well, our whole organization, I call myself a social entrepreneur. I believe okay. completely in the whole philosophy of Ubuntu and making sure that for all of us to grow, you know, for me to grow, you need to grow as well. Um, so what we do is I'm, I'm the middleman between the farmer as well as the market. So I'm basically a distributor. I started off with my own mini farmer, but now I actually distribute helping out the, the urban farmers in the township community. 
Um, so mm -hmm. we have a project okay. of Be Somebody SA called Be Somebody with Love. Um, that's where the whole tours come inside, whereby we're training homeless people as well as youth to become the next generation of farmers. So there's a homeless guy that we're working with, Jonathan, who's busy now with these IEDs. Yo, guys, getting someone to a homeless shelter is quite a big job, but it's okay. Mm, mm. And so are you working, uh, you know, are you working alone or are you working together with partners or have you added additional employees within Be Somebody? No, it's completely <laughs> me that's doing this, but I have, I have great partners actually that I work with that are also passionate about supporting um, the local economy and supporting homeless people as well. So basically it's as much as I'm doing it by myself, if I need someone to help me out with something, they're the first people to be able to say, yeah, let's do this. So yeah, what we do with the homeless people is that they go through a training program for six months. It's a seven day um, learning as well as practical um, work that we do with a group called Abalini Lezekaya, where they have a booklet and they learn about the different vegetables, how to grow them, the basics, um, soil types that you put it in, etc. And then after mm -hmm. that, they go through um, a five-month practical application of that knowledge. Um, and how that actually works is that we work together with a farmer that we know we identified that they need help all the time with resources and people to work mm -hmm. there. So that's where the homeless person goes to train, but also work at the same time. Um, and then mm -hmm. after that period of five months, when they've completed their training, the farmer then gives us a small piece of land on that big hectare of, of land that she has, so that we can be able to continue our project and continue to employ this homeless guy. Great. So since you started, I mean, you've said you're one year now, um, how many homeless people have you trained? And, and put onto these farms? Just one. Just one so far. Um, yeah, just one so far, because all the, all, the, all, the, all the, for us to be able to do this, we're getting all the income just from selling vegetables. So mm. to be able mm. to control everything and not, you know, go crazy and not be able to afford the homeless shelter fees every single month, I need to make sure that I focus my resources and do one thing at a time, do it good and do it well, and then move on to the yeah. next person. Yeah, no, absolutely. This is quite great. I mean, it's, it sounds like a passion project. I mean, you did say you are, you are a social entrepreneur. I'm curious to find out, um, dur during the COVID-19 um, lockdown periods, especially, let's say, level five, level four, what type of crops were you experimenting with? And how did you get the knowledge to, to, to grow the crops? <laughs> it was... I was growing things that I, I was growing spinach. Spinach was my favorite one to grow. Um, spinach and tomatoes. I'm still quite not so amazing at growing tomatoes yet, but yeah, um, spinach was my go-to one that I was growing. Okay, great. And you saying you were you were you were you were eating that spinach from a personal consumption, sending it to neighbors as well. How did you come about with product pricing, especially for the neighbors that wanted to buy spinach from you? You know, were you looking at any market prices, or you know, were you just thinking, no, I think seven rand is sufficient for me. Let's sell it for seven rand. So how did you come up with pricing for for the products that you'd grown in your garden? <laughs> Research, research, research. Um, most of us, um, I, I mean, in the 21st century, we, we are blessed to have the world at the palm of our hands. Like literally, you can go on your cell phone, go on YouTube, um, research everything, ask other people that are in the industry, how much are you selling it for? How much are you able to make out of it? Um, and it, I must say, it took me about eight months for me to actually be comfortable at the pricing and be comfortable that no, this pricing is, is okay, considering that we deliver it to your housing and considering how long the vegetable takes and that it's all organic and, and, and. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. So what are some of your best benefits of good food nutrition? You know, now that you've had your, your hands a little bit dirty, you know, you've, you've, you've shared your produce with some other customers and neighbors. What are some of your best benefits um, when it comes to good food nutrition? 
Oh, for me personally, and I will tell this to the whole world until forever, mm-hmm. I managed to lose 20 whole kgs of my own body weight just by actually shifting my diet onto a more vegetable-focused diet, um, oh, where your wow. energy levels are up again. Yeah, those were my own um, nutritional benefits that I found for myself. And even now, to, even till today, I still continue with that each and every single week week I make sure that I eat my 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 vegetables I'm even getting into vegetable smoothies now and yeah so yeah. it's good for your soul it's good for your mind as well as one of the most benefits that I've seen um is to be able to see because we distribute um the, some of the veg some of my clients they actually distribute the vegetables into different homeless shelters um, yes. So to be able to see your vegetables going into a different homeless shelter that you know it's nutritious food mm. going in to be eaten by someone who hardly ever eats any nutritious food. And you see the value mm. and the difference that it actually has upon those people. Mm. So, yeah, those are the major benefits that I've seen. Mm. Yeah, so Buko, I'm quite interested to know, like you mentioned, you distribute the food to some of the homeless shelters. And, you know, homeless shelters sometimes rely on donations. And if you're a farmer producing food, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Like you have to buy seeds, you know, um, if you're irrigating from a backyard garden, you are using municipal water. So I can believe that, you know, your electricity bill or your water bill is going high. How are you, what, what's the relationship between yourself and the the homeless food shelters when it comes to pricing is it just completely donation or are you finding other individual funders or just individuals basically in the community who are paying for their produce so that you could feed the homeless shelters how are you navigating your way around generating revenue for the produce that you're selling okay so i work together with an organization that deals with homeless shelters right directly mm. so they are an ngo that supply it's and the company is called Vedos of love and they supply homeless shelters with um mm. vegetables and food parcels so they get the sponsorships and the monies to be able to support young organizations like myself that support urban farmers in oh. this, yeah that's just how it that's just how it goes Oh, I see. I see. And, um, you know, you're, you are a young lady in the agri industry. And for the other youth in communities that in the community that's, that you live and serve uh, and more so your friends, have they asked you, like, Buko, what is it that you're doing? You know, why would you pick farming? You know, um, has there been any interest from young people uh, in the neighboring communities that you serve? Uh, within your inner circle as friends who have shown interest in what you do and maybe have wanted to become a part of Be Somebody? Definitely, definitely. And it's, it's actually, it, it makes my heart smile to know that what you yeah. did and it started just as a passion project is inspiring other young people to actually want to get into the whole agricultural space and actually move mm. as a business. Like there's this one lady, um, she just graduated with a BTEC in think agricultural management and she's just starting her farm and I thought hey actually you've reached out to me to be able to help you out with whatever it is that I have so I reached out to my friends that hey there's my other friend that sees and she's compost can we help her out to be able to start her own business um, and now she's well on her way as it's her first month of being operational and mm. yeah she's happy about it actually and other people, when I speak about our campaign, our, um, our program, whereby we're trying to train the next generation of you, just by seeing how I've been able to maneuver my way through COVID and be one year later here, yeah, they are most definitely interested as to when is the next intake happening and when do we start. Yeah, and what are your parents thinking of the phenomenal work that you've done in just 12 months, uh, you know, and your immediate family, you know, have they praised you, have they wanted to support you, or have some just thought, okay, this is just a waste of time, maybe you belong in a corporate world somewhere, just tell us what's the feedback, um, how's the, yeah, the feedback been from your family since you started Be Somebody South Africa? Mm-hmm. They, my family has been absolutely so proud of them because I started this whole thing with no money. I approached my mm. brother 
it was my first day month. I was like, hey, brother, um, it's my first day month. I don't have any money set <laughs> as my first day present. How about um, you help me with starting up my business? I want to just register it and create the website, etc. So then he blessed me with that money to be able to start. And every time when, when I speak to him, he's always like, wow, actually, super proud of you that one year later, you turn just your birthday present money and give you some help with the company. And even my yeah. other sisters, they, they at, at, at some point, they were, they still didn't really believe it. You know, so it's perhaps it's just uh, something that she started because I'm the last born of the whole family. It's just uh, something that she's starting. We wish her yeah. like, yes, but we'll just see how it goes. And now it's gone mm. and it's here now. And yeah, they really are super proud of me. And I yeah, know and that's so- my mom too. Um, she passed away though. Um, but yeah, I know wherever she is in heaven that she's definitely super proud of what I've been able to achieve. Oh no, I think she's definitely proud and condolences to you and your family. Um, I just want to find out, Buko, you know, you mentioned that your brother uh, blessed you with some money on your birthday. How much was that and um, what did you use that money for, specifically from an input perspective, you know? And the reason why I'm asking is because a lot of people in the industry, especially aspirant farmers, when they go into farming or want to try uh, uh, producing their own food, they tend to think that, you need, you know, they need thousands and thousands of rands or millions of rands just to start a farming project. So I think your story is one that carries so much inspiration and learning curve. So, um, you know, how much did you start with it, with the gardening uh, and, and producing your own food? And, you know, what tips can you give to somebody who wants to start producing their own food and just generating a little bit of income for themselves? It could be a graduate student. Um, it could be an unemployed uh, a person living in the townships. It could be a homeless person, you know. Um, but yeah, how much did you start with and um, how much can one also start with just to start producing their own food so that they could sell just to generate an income? Well, I started with 1,200 rand. That's what my brother gave me. He gave me 1,200 rand. Um, and that was, those costs were divided <clears throat> between, I generated an online store because I'm um, an online store. Um, paid that, which was 600 rand. So I was left with 600 rand, <laughs> um, <laughs> which then went through to um, just developing my, my, my whole product, going, traveling and speaking to different partners that I'd love to partner up. And also it went through actually having a, then a launch party, which was a launch party mm. slash birthday party for myself. Uh, where I invited my close friends and family to come celebrate my birthday and the launch of my company. And as a birthday gift to me, instead of giving me shoes and clothes or whatever, they had to go on my website and actually order something on my website so that I can start generating money like that. Wow, I think, yeah, you, you you use that money quite innovatively. And I like the fact that you kept control of the costs. I mean, who knew that one could start an online store with just 600 rand? So I guess there's no excuse for anybody out there, right? Because look where you are now. You've got a business, yeah? And even, sorry, and even with Steve, as I said, we, we, we mm. have a vast amount of information just at the palm of our hands. Who knew mm. that you can actually grow new rosemary just by propagating from the stem of an old rosemary or even using the seeds mm. from your old vegetable to create new vegetables. That's how I started. I didn't start out by buying seeds. I actually was mm. going on usage on YouTube and finding that, oh, actually, you can actually create a new vegetable from the vegetables that you have in your fridge and then yeah. start from there. Yeah. And, and and what are some of your vegetable gardening practices? So when you start with the spinach, a little bit of tomatoes, what what are some of the things that you picked up along that journey? Uh, you know, just some do's and don'ts that you could share with some of our viewers tonight. Uh, do's and don'ts. Do's definitely. Um, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess one of them would be just start, um, right? The do is to that's just it. start. I just planting. wanted to say just start and just but, but gardening is trial and error. There's there's not yeah. a do, there's not a no. Just start and keep going. If it didn't work out this time, 
figure out why it didn't work out and try it again yeah. that's just that's just it absolutely so wow buko i think you've got an amazing story so what's next for be somebody south africa for 2022 oh so so much be somebody is a um we partnered up we started actually distributing our vegetables to a hotel here so it's just wow. keeping that whole consistency going and just keeping good relationships with the clientele that we already have um and building new partners as well um as what 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 we're really focusing on now on this section because we've been able to figure out how to distribute the vegetables um now it's just focusing our 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 our, our, our energy mostly on the main passion which is putting homeless people sustainably into the homeless shelter and into employment mm. um and one of the actual challenges that we are struggling with um with the youth just trying to figure out a sustainable way to get the youth interested in in, in farming and gardening because we're paying them a stipend just for them to be able to go to a farm and travel but then those costs became a bit too much because you know, at some point they'll they'll be like, no, this is it's a lot of hard work for two hundred rand a week, and I'm like, but that's all I have to try keep you going along the way to buy toiletries and just maybe start your own garden and everything. So it's just yeah. those challenges, fixing and tweaking here, fixing here, tweaking here, um, until we have a perfect finished product. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Buko, for your time. Um, I just want to know where can people reach out to you if they want to support you, if they want to work with you? Um, is there an email address that you have or a website that we could go to? Yes, it is www. I'm actually changing my website. I actually changed it today to www.besomebodysa.com. Um, and my email address is buko at besomebodyct.com. Um, and we have a web, I mean, not a website, a WhatsApp number, which is 076-686-9257. But definitely catch us on the socials, Instagram and Facebook at, at be somebody SA, um, on both Instagram and on Facebook. Wow. Oh, thank you so much, Buko. I wish you all the best with Be Somebody SA and um, hoping that you can get more partnerships so that you could sp expand into other homeless shelters and maybe just teach and train other homeless people, you know, just to make effective use of their time and um, for them to start gardening because I definitely know that we need a lot more farmers, we need a lot of food producers in our countries because people go to bed um, hungry at night and I think, you know, when we reintroduce that whole concept of you can grow your own food, you don't have to rely on um, green grocers and big supermarkets, you can produce your own food at a tiny, tiny budget to just feed your family, especially for those that are living below minimum wage. So thank you so much for your efforts and just contributing towards society. It's a pleasure. That what it's a pleasure. That was Buko Dem, founder and CEO of Be Somebody SA. And she's a young entrepreneur within the agricultural industry and uh, doing a great thing by just, you know, serving her community, um, starting a passion project. She considers herself as a, as a social entrepreneur and she started Be Somebody with just 1,200 Rand. She budgeted 600 Rand just to open an online store. And I think this story um, goes to show that, you know, you could really, really start a business with a a very very tight budget or a small budget at that and uh, she's been trading with be somebody now for a whole year so um, and throughout her journey there's many trials and errors that she's found she taught herself how to grow her own food um, you know started with spinach um, also um, experimented with uh, tomatoes as well and then also just connected herself with other farmers and um, organizations or institutions that will need fresh produce so I really hope that you're inspired by her story and uh, get in touch with her if you want to support her and also maybe replicate what she does in your own community because I'm, I'm sure you can definitely make a difference as well. Thanks. That's it for me tonight. Take care.